So for this task, we're doing a fecal float. Uh, so we have our fecosol solution, we have our sample, we have our container, um, and we'll start by adding just about a quarter of a teaspoon of our sample into our vial. Wanna make sure that we're not adding too much or too little. Just about a quarter of a teaspoon. And we want to add our fecosol solution until it's about half full. And then we want to mix it together so that there are no large particles. Getting the particles out, the larger particles, is probably one of the tougher parts of this task, especially if this stool was kind of very well formed before you start mixing. Just a little bit more, break up some of those bigger portions. Okay, so once we have it mixed, we want to add some more of our fecal sol up until about a half an inch away from the top of our container. Okay, so from here, we will take this to the centrifuge, uh, make sure that it's balanced, and we will spin it for about three to five minutes, and then we can uh, start the other steps uh, for our task. Okay, so now we are going to centrifuge our samples. Um, we actually can do um, two of them at the same time. We can centrifuge the ones <coughs> for our fecal float um, and the one for our sediment um, because they are filled to roughly the same amount and they both need to be centrifuged at the same time and same speed. So we'll put these in for about three to five minutes, uh, and then we'll be ready to uh, prepare them to view under the microscope. So, put that on. Make sure that it's running and that it's balanced. Okay, so now we're finishing up our fecal flute. Um, we've centrifuged it for about five minutes, um, and now what we'll do is add some more of our flotation solution into our sample until it forms a meniscus at the top and then we take our cover slip and we place it carefully on top and then we'll leave that for 15 minutes um, and then we'll put a cover slide over it and examine it under the microscope. Okay, so it's been 15 minutes, so we'll take our cover slip and place it onto our slide. They hurt, actually, and I've had a baby go through. And now we'll take a look at it under the microscope. So, start on our lowest power and get it into focus. Okay, so we want to examine this the same way we would examine our other slides in a zigzag pattern. So we're getting all of the fields to one side, dropping down a field, and then going all the way back. So it looks fairly normal. A little bit of debris on our four power to our ten. And then we adjust. And for this, we're looking for alpha that float to the top in our fecal sample. So they're less dense than some of the other ones that we would find on our fecal sediment. So just a bit of debris, the 
everything looks Let's mostly say, normal. Yeah, bunch of so then I'm from there, we'll so, go to our higher like, power. Monday didn't hit me as hard like I was expecting. And now I adjust like, again. Like, oh, uh, 11, 12 hours. Right, that sucks. <laughs> oh, like, no. There we go. Don't water me sick. And again, but I'm always going through each field. Day, no, not if you're vomiting. Ooh. No, the worst was when. So luckily for our patient, we're not seeing anything too out of the ordinary. I'm lucky for educational purposes. But okay, so after we've examined the whole thing, we'll uh, record our findings into our record. Anything abnormal will have the DVM look, and usually it's good to have someone double check just in case. Um, but this sample seemed all clear, so we're all set. Okay, so now we will look at um, some of the most common parasites that we would see in our stool sample. Um, first one is coccidia, so known as isospora, isospera. Um, it's a protozoal infection. Um, we see um, some Di or diarrhea often with it, um, lethargy, inappetence, um, and it can happen at any age, but we see it most commonly in puppies. Um, so when you look at it under the microscope, it's these round um, circular objects with um, another round object in the middle. That's how you can kind of differentiate it from some of the other ones that we see. Um, so, our next one is roundworm. Uh, roundworms are also known as Toxicara conus, uh, conus being dog. Uh, so, it can happen uh, to any dog at any age, but again, we tend to see it more in puppies. Um, it can be dormant in a dog and not have any symptoms, uh, and then um, that dog can pass it on to their puppies. So it's important to always be testing puppies um, for worms and using dewormer even if the mother um, was not showing any symptoms. Uh, and roundworms are also zoonotic, so it's an important one that we let our clients know, um, especially if they have young children, uh, that it's you know something they want to be careful of when they bring a new puppy home. You can differentiate these um, by their darker middles um, and their circular shape. From there, uh, we also sometimes see hookworms, um, ancylostoma. Um, with hookworms, we usually see it um, along with some anemia because hookworms feed off of the blood in the GI tract. So a lot of times we'll have um, a puppy come in. Again, it can happen any age, but usually puppies. Um, and they're lethargic, um, just generally not feeling well. And we'll check, they'll be a little anemic. Um, so then we check a stool sample. Uh, and a lot of the time we'll see anemia uh, with hookworms, kind of a comorbid thing. Um, the Last parasite that we see probably more often than uh, anything else is Giardia. Um, Giardia is a protozoal infection. Again, can happen at any age, and we do see a lot of older dogs that end up having it, especially if they go to doggy daycare or dog parks. Um, it's transmitted by a fecal oral route. So um, if a, an infected dog um, defecates at a park or at doggy daycare and it's not cleaned appropriately and another dog steps in it and then licks its paws or um, you know is playing with or grooming another dog that has these in its fur um, it's very very easily transmitted uh, causes diarrhea and sometimes vomiting inappetence um, it can get to be a very serious infection. Um, again, at any age, but we see it very often in puppies. Um, and it's 
tough to diagnose because the cysts are only really shed intermittently. Um, it's kind of hard to catch it sometimes. Um, but, um, you know, when dogs do have it, it, it can create a whole host of problems. Um, and so that is our Giardia cyst. Um, and those are uh, just a couple of the most common parasites that we see um, in our fecal samples.